If you've been using React, you may well have seen this sort of syntax being used and wondered exactly what's going on. This is a render prop, and in this video, I'll be explaining what render props are, why they are useful, and how to use them. I've built this very simple app that shows the price of Bitcoin updating on a regular basis. It shows green if the price has increased, otherwise it shows in red. Don't get excited or maybe worried if you own Bitcoin, these prices aren't real. Here we have a component called Bitcoin Price, which sets up a callback to a Bitcoin price feed when it mounts. Each time the feed gets a new price, the callback is called with an object containing the price and a boolean which is true if it's an increase, false otherwise for a decrease, and the component's state is updated with this. This causes the component to re-render, and when it does, it returns the result of calling children with the new Bitcoin price an increase indicator. This may seem confusing as children usually contains React elements, but here we're calling it as a function. The children in this case is referred to as a render prop. Let's see how this component is used. In my main app component, I want the Bitcoin price to show up here and update automatically. So I'm first going to import my Bitcoin price component. And next, I'm going to wrap my span in it. At the moment, children will be this React element here, the span. But as we saw from looking at the Bitcoin price component, it needs to be a function. So we're going to make it into a function and we're going to wrap it in curly braces because it's an expression. And the function is going to take an object containing the price and the increase boolean. Then inside the span, we're going to put the price itself. And then we're going to add a style object to the span. And that's going to set the color. And if increase is true, it will set the color to green. Otherwise, it will set the color to red. What happens here is that this span will re-render with new values each time the children function of the Bitcoin price component is called. And this is what render props are used for, a way to get data from parent components into child components while being able to code them in line like this. Now, you may have used higher order components for this purpose in the past. I do quite like higher order components, but they do have a disadvantage. That is, in this case, you would have to extract this span into its own component, which takes increase and price props, call the higher order component with it, and then render the resulting component here. This can be annoying as you have to create a new component, and also when you're looking at this app component, what's going on with the Bitcoin price would be a lot less transparent. From this perspective, render props are nice as you can use them throughout a component and really see the details of what's going on in terms of the data rather than having just something like a Bitcoin price for feed span here and not really knowing what it's doing. I've quite controversially stated in the title of this video that render props suck. What leads me to make such a bold claim? Well, from my point of view, the syntax is just really meh. I just, I just don't like the syntax. When you have just one usage like this, it really isn't too bad. But when you have like a massive component there instead of just a span or sort of a lot of React elements there, it starts to get very messy. Um, but where it gets really bad is if you have multiple in a file and it can start to get very ugly. I've been doing a lot of GraphQL recently and you have query components and each of these use render props and this often leads to people nesting the render props and you can imagine nesting multiple levels of render props within one another and it just looks like complete spew. 
Um, so in that case, higher order components are a much better choice, I'd say. Finally, they do make unit testing with Enzyme harder, as the contents of a render prop won't show up when you shallow render a component. It'll just be a function. Having said this, render props are the default for many libraries, including React's context API, so you do have to learn them. They can be useful, but I feel they're starting to be a bit overused, and personally I'm looking forward to seeing React's up-and-coming hook feature solve them. I will add a quick addendum to this. Since I first started working on this video, I have found out that Enzyme has added this render prop function to make testing render props much easier. This solves in, um, from my point of view, one of the biggest issues I had with render props, so the suck is significantly reduced. I'm putting out new videos weekly, so make sure you subscribe. I'd also love it if you liked the video too. Any questions or comments, please add them to the comments below and I will respond. Make sure also that you get on my mailing list so you don't miss out on regular JavaScript tips delivered direct to your inbox. And there's a link for that in the description below.